When it comes to the security of our applications, we often hear the terms authentication and authorization thrown around. Now, it's very easy to get confused with what these terms mean and whether or not they're actually interchangeable. So let's clear that up in this video. So first things first, what is authentication? Well, it turns out authentication is nothing more than you identifying yourself to the application. In other words, whenever you have like a login form, you're going to be prompted with like an email or a username and a password. That's you authenticating with the application. That's you identifying who you are as a user to the application. Now, on the back end of that application, if the information is going to check out, we're going to grant you access to the application. But if, let's say, the username is wrong or the password is wrong, of course, we're not going to be granting you any kind of access to the application. And that very simply is authentication. Now, let's take a look at a code example to see how this actually works. So this is a very simple node application that I've spun up just for the sake of this example. And here you can see I've actually got this endpoint. We're going to make a post request to the login endpoint. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check your username and I'm going to check your password. Of course, in this case, I'm just using hard-coded values of Chaim and coding with Chaim. In a real life application, you'd be checking against the database, but this is just an example just to illustrate what authentication actually looks like. So the most important point right here is that we're going to be checking the information that you're going to be giving us. You're going to be giving us Chaim and coding with Chaim. If that checks out, then great, you're going to get access. If it doesn't check out, if the username is not Chaim or the password is not coding with Chaim, then we don't give you access. Now, what happens if you do in fact get access? Meaning what happens if the information does actually check out? Well, then in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually give you a JSON web token for your efforts. And inside of that token, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the user ID is equal to one. In other words, part of the payload that's going to exist inside of this JSON web token is going to be an object that's going to have under the key called user ID. And the value of that is going to be one. And once we start talking about authorization, this is going to become a lot more relevant. So great, the user has actually been able to successfully identify who they are, they've successfully authenticated with the application, and now we're going to give them access. But now we actually have another problem, which data is this user allowed to see? See, the way that the application might be structured in many examples is you might have data that belongs to specific users. So of course, if data belongs to one user, I don't want the other user who this data does not belong to to be able to see that data. I don't want John to be able to see Jane's data and vice versa. Everyone should be able to see their own data. So that is what authorization is all about. So if we come back to the code example now, if you remember earlier when I was showing you the authentication example, I was making sure that I point out the fact that in the JSON web token sign method, I'm passing this object that has in it a key user ID and the value is one. This is now going to be very useful for us for the authorization. So let's take a look how this is gonna be useful. Here you can see I've got this cars array and it's going to be an array of objects. So each object will have in it two keys, the make of what the car actually is, and then the user ID, which is going to be either one or two, and this is how we identify who this data actually belongs to. Now here's our secret endpoint. So this endpoint, in order to actually see the data at this endpoint, you must have a valid token. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the token out of the headers. We're then gonna verify the token. In the event where we were unable to verify the token, in which case, let's say it was already expired, that would be an example of like an unverifiable token. In this case, we're gonna give you a 403. But if the token was verified, in other words, it hasn't expired yet, then it is still a valid token. Then we're going to be coming into this if check here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a filter over the cars array. So basically the same user ID that we've actually signed into the token here is now going to be available to us on this verify token object. As you can see right here, we can do verify token that user ID. This user ID will now tell us who is the user that's actually trying to make this request. And now we can use this to make sure that they're only going to get the data that actually belongs to them. And the way that we're going to do that is by doing a simple filter over our cars array. So again, the cars array has objects where each object has in it a user ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the car's user ID is equal to the verify tokens user ID, in which case it belongs to you, then I'm going to go ahead and put it into this user's cars array. And then finally, once this filter is done, I'm going to send back a 200 and then give you the array of cars that belongs to you. And that is very simply what authorization is. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.